Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. Treat Especial, we'll have a poke at this Milfucky. What you call it? Point of order. Sons of bleaches over at the preppy table making fun of my hobo chic. Call this the table nakastit mogul. This is next summer's Louis Vuitton. For not since I wore that puffy cream colored cardigan have I had so much flack for wearing a proper shop attire. For geez la sacks, you can't even buy the things anymore. They offshored this union to 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 tell you or Mexico. You can't even buy these things. They're, they're just not the same anymore. I think baby dog got to you guys. I'm not allowed to wear this thing around her. I think uh well you think it you like the way it looks. Just feel the way it smells. <laughs> Twisted steel and sex appeal with a top note of copper pennies. Speaking in a matter of fashion, in the five, here's the Gucci handbag for mechanics. What for impressing the ladies auxiliary at break time. The fap off, I'm in the five stages of grief here. <laughs> the thing is you always buy the best tool you can possibly afford. And I got no problem at all paying a little extra for a tool I know is robust and well-designed and manufactured uh, in North America or you're, you know, I, I have my biases. But in this case, I, I was twitterpated. I was tongue-tangulated, stupefied into thinking that there was some redeeming qualities in this because I had exchanged so much legal tender. Now, I exchange my labor for legal tender and then change, exchange my legal tender for tools to do more labor. Does that make sense? Not really, but <laughs> that is the treadmill I'm on. And I uh, so fucking bummed that uh, I feel like I got ripped off by this thing. 540 bucks. And of course, uh, denying it. No, I must be missing. It's got to be good. No, no, no. The Milfucky, already off the hop, better because it's got the battery indicator uh, status. So in, in the fap off, they could only afford but the one LED. And in this one, at least they show you how much battery chooch is left in the chotch. The thread form is a little different, but the front bearing is not a shielded bearing. It is a sealed bearing. So very uh, much better at preventing dust ingress. It also has the locking pin here. It's got a couple of, I don't know, if you want your grandmother or something to, to go and polish some knobs. Um, she got weak wrists or whatever, you can, put a, you can put a handle on there, I guess. Lower speed mind, 8300 max, but does that really matter if you're polishing or sanding? I have my doubts. Lot snappier lock action and not nearly as mushy trigger. Despite this trigger being of name brand from Germany, yeah, Markhart, it's still, when it got in the casement on the fap off, it didn't, didn't, quite, uh, didn't quite tickle my taint. So let's get her apart here. What happened? Where am I? I've been overserved. Fucking camera ran out of batteries. I'm afraid you missed out on my funniest joke ever. Granted, you're skating around <laughs> with your jersey on backwards. Any goal is a goal, even if it's on your own net. So yeah, I had her apart and had a look at her. You can see the affixations for that uh, TPS and SEBS over molding. So many more anchoring points. You see, you see that? And it being uh, near past Christmas here, when I was looking at these little teats on the fap off, I think I had her in manual focus, so it didn't, listen to my audibles you can see the dq tips floating off there pug fucking fugly in the milfucky not tea bag we don't see any additional little greebling here in order to uh, hold her in the mold light pipes off of the side of the brain boxery in order to uh, to tell you how much chooch is left in that battery while we're in there, have a, have a gander at the bosses for the fasteners. You see how much more meat there is around the periphery of that guy versus the snap-on on the lower side there. 
and we see the results is that it cracks out. <laughs> this is turning more into a compare and contrast between the two brands. However, hell hath no fury like a warm, warm and scorned. So somebody at the fap off or whoever designed these got a attaboy and a pat on the back as a Christmas bonus from their boss for using a PCB as the terminals for the battery. You see a proper on this guy on the Milwaukee, a proper molded part, not just a PCB. Mind you, this is shaves pennies, whole pennies off the cost of the bill of materials. And the switch that ubiquitous iron oxide red brown, Defense switch, a Chinese brand with the uh, French name. No bellows on there. However, not a bad little switch. All it's doing, there is no brain box. It's got a potentiometer, analog signal feeding back into the brain box for itself. Nice conformal coating, nice big fat heat sink. What goes from the MOSFET through vias to the other side of the board. Oh, this board got some nice name brand components on it as well as being beautifully conformally coated. Uh, Texas Instruments, microcontroller, uh, international rectum fryer, big old beefy MOSFET, and a diode of some sort. Now normally you wouldn't need an H-bridge, that is four of these MOSFETs, because you're not reversing this motor. But a, a pot potentially more robust design would be to have two of these guys, because when you're running a motor, it's a big inductor. There's a lot of current going in there. When you stop it dead, those pixies want to continue on. That creates a voltage spike, and that voltage spike fries things. So what they do to mitigate that is they add a diode, and that dissipates that, that, that voltage spike. But what you could do is just have a, a different uh, type of circuit, a different topology. On second thought, I am many things. One of them is not an analog circuit designer. If it's, it might have been in the past they just used totem pole. It does have some advantages. It's faster switching, but it might not matter. If you, it really de depends on the design and the, the, the components themselves. If the components are nicely oversized, uh, it won't make no never mind what kind of topology this is because it's just driving a dumb motor. It's just maybe there's that legacy, that uh, inertial thought pattern where older is better. Quite frankly, this looks very well designed. Lots of nice heat sinking on there. Yeah, I might be full of shit. Well, there's no question I'm full of shit, but am I full of shit on this one? I haven't seen one of these since I shared a hotel room with the Duclaw. Sick. It's got the receptacle tip and everything. <laughs> they, they got a cute little, it's so sweet, cute little boot on there. Uh, kind of smart though, because the fan is blowing. It's a bi-directional fan, not that it matters. So it's blowing air out of here, sucking air in here. Uh, yeah, anyway. And they have a boot to prevent the ingress of dust, abrasive dust, into that oil light bushing. This is a Mabuchi motor with the flux ring, a typical what you see every day. Nice uh, copper impregnated brushes. Appears to be two segment uh, commutator on there. Can't be. Got to be four. Uh, yeah. A little hair around that. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's four in a quadrant. Now, there is, uh, this is cute because the snap-on version, Coon Trucking had three of the things burn up in short order. And this Milwaukee version has some protection for overheating. There is a, a fuse or an RT on there. It measures the temperature, feeds it back into the brain boxery, or it might even be, no, it's not a fuse because there's not enough power going, the, the wires are too small. So it is a sensor to, uh, to tell the brain box if you're overheating. So there's some protection in there. This is <laughs> somebody who soldered this uh, saw that it was fucked up and then try and hide the evidence but you can see you got some spring and spring and hanging out we got some flyaways and they're super long that is actually terrible because we see the casement of the motor here right 
right close. I mean, it wouldn't take for anything and you'd fry that board. That's the positive mind. Let's see if this case is grounded. Now, if the metal housing of the motor is grounded, we're in big trouble because that would fry the motor. If you got one of these and it fried right away, you'd want to look at that guy. It would fry this board right to kingdom come. That's not going to work, is it? Let's try this. We're good there. Okay, so it's insulated from the negative terminal. So even if these positive leads touched, brushed against, um, you'd still be safe. But still, you don't like to see these kind of bikini flyaways first thing in the spring of the season. Extricating some roll pins here. Don't judge me. <laughs> the car painter's hammer, I know. But the state of this place, just knocking out some roll pins out of this gearbox. Now the gearbox housing is alu or is aluminium on the tip, but it's glass fiber reinforced nylon back here. And we got some threaded bits for handles, but this appears to be mainly just for aesthetics that it's, uh, they put a metal tip on there. So, so it looks more skookum than potentially it is. Well, here's the gearbox assembly, nice big pinion on there. All the components, metal injection molded, centered metal. And the planet carrier cantilevered over, quite beefy, the pins are cantilevered. And then that's the first reduction, that is not adjustable. And then the final reduction has a gear speed selector. So in the low speed, we engage the ring gear and in the high speed, we disengage the ring gear so that uh, we get less speed, we get more speed out of her, out of the output stage. The front bearing housing, take that off, Ginger, careful. There's a washer in there. You can see the injection, the uh, die injected, a aluminum 380, nice and beefy housing in there. Two bearings, the back bearing is shielded, but no big deal. That's a fair size shaft for what it does. And a fair size, a big, nice big bearing on the front side. Look at the size, the compare and contrast now. The, look at the size of that front housing versus the snap-on. Now you get a 200 pound gorilla reefing on there to, to take a petrified gasket off of a something or other. You see the difference. Now, of course, that lock pin on the front side, brilliant. If you look down deep in there, you can see how big that lock pin is. It's quite large. It eliminates you from doing the walk of shame to go get the proper size wrench and then the wrong wrench and then you hear the call it wrench and you go, yeah. And it's, there's two holes there, so you never got to turn it too far to get where you need to go. After having a peek, at the inwards of both of these tools, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, if you're considering either the Milwaukee or the Fapoff, the Milwaukee is the way to go. It's twice the tool for half the money. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Oh, also, yes, I <laughs> can't wait to get my hands. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have the hazard fart apart and, and see if it is actually manufactured in the same spot.